if you can hear us. Yeah. All right, this is Tech Foundation 2, Traffic, Conversion, Improvements, and Beyond. This is where we give more secrets, more time to improving and actualizing way more opportunities than we could possibly cover, than Matt could possibly cover in Tech Foundation 1. It's so good to see each and every one of you. Marvin is here, Certified Advisors, Marvin Webster, Michael Durr, Tony Young is here with us. So good to see you, Tony. And we're going to get into what this course, this is the introduction. Now, I do have uh, Matt DeCruz and Sue Bell with me, of course. And uh, that's always a pleasure and incredibly important. Let me go ahead and just make sure that you guys can hear me. Give me a one. Good morning, Mihai. Also good to see you, as always. So very good to see you. Bill Cox, good to see you as well. I'm glad you got in. Okay. I'm not thrilled with the calendar and time zone technology in GoToWebinar. Either there's something wrong with me or there's something wrong with it in terms of the time zone. They, they give me a different time zone issue each time. Like they will pre present me <laughs> different <laughs> type of Greenwich time versus California time versus mountain time. So I'll talk to Sue and, and a few other team members, make sure that I'm just not crazy. It's probably me. All right. So Matt is going to be talking about what this amazing course is about. This I'm really excited about Tech Foundation 2 improving, increasing, kickstarting traffic and conversion because we have added some new material. I know that my material has gotten much richer for week three uh, and I'm going to be really going into some things that I've never talked about before. The exception, of course, is certification and we are constantly growing certification and we are constantly, what we cover during the year actually enhances as we move into the next certification event. So we're constantly providing ways to provide you guys with this information. And as you know, presentation requires time and work. So we have had a, how many, Matt, how many uh, Tech Foundation Perpetual Mastermind boot camps have we had, webinar boot camps have we had already? One or two? This is, this is the second one. This is the second one. You guys, it's really, that's really exciting because it's pretty fresh. First one was uh, our, our Kickstart, had great material. It's going to be better this time. And I'm really, really excited about it because you guys are, a, uh, each and every one of you is a significant part of creating this course and enhancing and improving this course. Matt, what's going on with this? What is the Tech Foundation uh, improving and kickstarting traffic and conversion? Great. Hello, Russell, Sue. Hello, everybody. Um, yeah, uh, Russ, this course is where we've gotten out of the factory now, right? We've built our website, we've got our blog up, we've got our basic RSS one feed system set up. Now, this is where we start looking at the website that's live and we start looking at how we can actually opt optimize it. How do we find missed opportunities? How do we tweak and adjust things in our copy, in our content? How do we enhance our analytics so we can get a better story and a better feel of what's actually going on? And most importantly, it's about how to drive more automated traffic to your website and then be able to convert that traffic into sales. <clears throat> So guys, uh, as usual, the course outline is all over here for us. This course is seven weeks long, okay? So what we're basically gonna do is, I'm gonna take you through the slideshow now, and we're just gonna look at what we're doing. Okay, let's go back to the start. Okay, so first of all, I'd like to say welcome guys to Take Two, and like Russell said, this is all about money side traffic, and conversion optimization. Now this is where we start looking at the WebRing system. We're looking at WR1 and WRS1, how they're connected, how they're driving traffic, how things are working for our blog. We start crossing over into the realms of the WR2 in this course. And this is where we start looking at how we can drive more traffic and how we can convert that and optimize it to get us better results. Okay, so that's what we're going to cover on this course. Through this period, um, you're going to hear from Sue, you're going to hear insights from myself, from Russell, from Jimmy, Kevin might be jumping on the call as well, at particular stages where we start speaking about all the things that we're doing. Okay, so as we know, Sue Bell, 
chief mischief maker and whipcracker, who's now in the process of moving to Arizona. So um, she'll be quite busy. It's myself. You guys have heard me from Tech One. For the ones who haven't done Tech One and you hear, um, they call me Mr. ROI. I'm not sure why they do that. But I usually am the guy that helps you throughout the process and I get very much hands on with you uh, when you, you're building out your things. Okay. Russell Wright, Nero Marketer and Guest Lecture. So Russell's always going to be uh, with me on most of the calls. Russell in this course gets really into content, into persuasion, into creating better sales funnels, all these kind of things. This is what he's going to be covering in his lectures on this course. So it's really good to hear this. You don't want to miss it out. And of course, Jimmy is going to jump on. He's going to give us the, the starting blocks of DAS. Okay. And then Kevin, Mr. Semantics. Okay. He's going to come in and give us uh, uh, some scoops on what's happening in the semantic realm. Right. So for this course, let's take a look at what you need. One, you need a money site. Guys, if you haven't built your start money site yet, uh, jump back to take one and get the job done because this is where you can start testing things and applying what we tell you. Okay. Very important. Two, you want more traffic and more sales. Okay. You've got to have a desire for that. So we've got a few questions we're going to ask you guys, and I think this is a good time to open up the chat lines if we have any questions. Is One, how many of you actually got a money site that you want to work on for the duration of these next seven weeks? Uh, give me a one if you have, two if you haven't. Just so we can get a feel of yeah. what's happening here. And one thing I should mention is that we are implementing the practice of opening our audio lines more and more. We're finding that it actually saves time, rich, uh, enhances content. Uh, if you have it. So that's just something to keep in mind. You know, know that a headset is a nice thing to have. Looks like most of you have a, a money site. And uh, we also get the question, do you have to have a SEO website, silo architecture site? The answer to that is no. You do not have to have taken uh, Tech Foundation 1 in order for me, in order for you to take this training. But it's nice for yes. you to have that. Okay. <laughs> You just need to have the ability to have a bar button that can create a transaction. That's that's your core requirement. <laughs> okay, so uh, next thing is what do you want to achieve out of this course? Um, uh, let's just roll back. I'll leave this. Basically, what do you want to achieve out of this course and how much money do you are you actually making online? So um, if you guys want to just basically throw in what you want to achieve in this course, what are you actually looking for? Just so we can get a feel. Is it more traffic? Is it conversions? Is it analytics? Is it sales funnels? What would you like to get out of the, the next seven weeks in context to what we're going to be covering? Great. If you, want to, if, you want to talk, if you want to talk about it, just let me know and I'll open the line up and we can have a conversation. Marvin is saying all three. Tony needs more traffic. Okay. Traffic and conversion analytics training. Okay, good, Bill. That's great. Uh, we definitely have that as well. Lots of stuff on that. Yeah, I get quite a bit into uh, into the analytics with that with you guys, where we start speaking about things in a lot more detail. So, guys, in this course, we're going to find we 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 we're going a bit deeper down the rabbit hole, and we're explaining a bit more advanced things for you guys. Okay. Right. So, next thing is. Um, how many of you are currently making money? On? Give us a one if you're making more than a th less than a thousand bucks a month. Two if you're making more between a thousand and ten thousand, and then three if you're making more than ten. Just so we can get a feel of where you guys are at. If you don't want to, it's fine. Okay. We won't mention names at this stage. What was that scale again, Matt? You lost me on that. Uh, one less than a thousand. Two. 1,000 to 10,000, three above 10,000. Okay, good. Good, good. All right, we'll keep that information private. This helps us know a little bit about what's going on. Okay, so what to expect? Each webinar will have two parts, theory and practice. Okay. Practice is part of where we actually do the process step by step with you. So um, through this course, there will be parts where we discuss things, but then there will be other parts where we actually take templates out or tools out to demonstrate how we go about doing something. Okay. Um, could you guys give us a one if you want to hear base, if, if both is important to you, the theory and the practice, or two if you'd like to see more practice, practical type of demonstrations rather than theories. 
just I just want to get an idea of the egg. Practice, practice. Okay, the guys want to practice. Excellent. Good. Okay. Okay, now remember guys, um, what you learn each week, we want you guys to apply it to the site that you're working on. So um, that's where your practice is going to come in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but obviously I'm online to, to answer questions via Skype. Um, if it's related to like technical things or analytics and that, and then also Russell, if you've got advanced sales questions, um, you can put them in the, the, the tech group and we can actually chat about it throughout the, 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 the Skype group. Yeah, on, on my side of things, the key here is for you guys to begin to understand why your visitors take action. Now, I cover a lot of that in Tech Foundation 1. Uh, I get you, if you've properly completed, now we do have people running, just as an aside, we do have people running parallel training courses. In fact, I know some of you are doing two and three things all at the same time. You've got your brain uh, running three different tunes. That's okay. Uh, the main thing is that Tech Foundation 1, when it comes to marketing and neural marketing, is really about getting in touch with the basic structure of your pain uh, in the market and understanding how to do market research before you even begin so that you understand how, you know, what kind of an offer is even worth sculpting or creating. This is going to be more about making sure that you have offers that convert. It's going to make sure that you understand how to draw clicks on your headlines as it's going to be pushed down out through your network in the form of you know, RSS feeds and many other things. So it's really quite advanced what you guys are doing. You're dealing both with conversion optimization and technical infrastructure SEO all at the same time. As far as we know, there's no training in the world that attempts to teach you all these things at the same time. Now, what's cool about it is that we're going to get you through all that. Go ahead, Matt. Cool. Okay. So like I said, any questions, Skype group, just fire it in there and we'll have a chat about it over there. Okay, so the course, basically this is what we're going to do. We've got the content modules, which you can find within the the, the members area, right? Um, all the updates get made to the content over there. There's already last season's webinars that are available. So for the guys who want to go ahead, feel free to jump in there and look at those webinars. There's some excellent, excellent material through that last one there. We've got a lot of good reviews from the last course. So feel free to jump in there. Okay. So the first thing we're going to start talking about, okay, is blog content and content curation. This is the distribution of your message across the web. Now we bought a WR1. We set up a WR1 social profiles. They connected. We write a blog post. It posts to Facebook, Twitter. All the places we set up, we post a video on YouTube channel, it goes into our blog, we broadcast it out on WR1. Okay, WR2, this is where we start building on our W2 sites, and our blog content will start moving to some of these properties as well via RSS. So we're going to start digging into that and explaining how it works in this course. Okay, next thing we're going to cover is headline optimization to get more traffic. Uh, Russell gives a really great lecture on this with regards to one-line zingers. It's taking what we learned to take one to the next level. Okay, dealing with writer's block. Uh, we have a chat here on how to find content, how to deal with things, and how to basically get your content kicked off. Okay, another great topic. So this 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 course is really good, at eh, Russell. And I actually come back and I look at it all. It's, yeah, it's actually it a really good good course. Yes. Sorry, I'm just playing my own trumpet here. Yeah, not true. <laughs> but I think that done a great job here. Moving into ranking and traffic, okay? A link is not a link. This isn't your grandma's Google. And this is where we get like guest appearances by Jimmy, where he gives his thoughts on driving traffic and getting your sites ranked through the search engines. Okay, so this is also some great, great chats. Um, we get into using RSS one feed to automate a lot of the traffic and the links. Okay, and this is when we start pushing things out to our networks. So we're going to actually look at the plugins that and how we work, how we set them up in the blog. So there will be practical demonstrations done over there showing you how we connect things. Okay, introduction to authority stacking to get better rankings. Um, this is where Jeremy talks about building authority and trust in your sites and he gives us the introduction to it. So if you've been to certification, you've got the full story, um, but this is always great as a refresher for the guys who have never actually become aware of this. This is a great starting point for you guys. Okay, it's very important. Adding DAS to the one feed. Okay, this is where 
we get into more advanced one feed type of setups. Okay, this is a, a, a probably a two hour, two, two hour chat that day alone. Then traffic, uh, tracking traffic sources and sales with Google and PeeWeek. And uh, in this section, I, I take you guys into getting a better understanding of Google Analytics. We're going a little bit deeper into it to become clearer on what's actually going on with our sites and where our holes are and where our strengths are. Okay, so we look deeper into analytics and we hop between Google and between PeeWeek. Okay, so content curation. Okay, quality content is the most coveted and expensive part of marketing blogging that can be a real pain to maintain. Okay. In take one, we covered the painkiller, okay? Now, in this one, we're going to take the painkiller one step further for you guys. Russ, do you want to give maybe like a one-minute, two-minute chat on content and content curation just on these two slides here? Sure. Because okay. uh, these are the things you're still going to be covering. Sure. Um, okay, so how many of you know about content curation? Uh, just give me a one if you do know about content curation and two if you do not so that I can speak clearly about what is actually useful in content curation. Okay. Uh, content curation is the collection and or swiping of snippets of content and or full concepts and industry ideas and scooping them into your own post. All right, almost like you're scooping ice cream into a dish. My friend who owns scoopit.com calls it that way for a reason because when he was talking to people about content curation, that was the easiest way for them to understand it. You're not stealing the content and just republishing it as is and, and swiping other people's content. You're actually pulling a piece of content or industry story into your post and then you're making expert comment, you know, meritocratic comment on it as either an authority or you're speaking to the industry solution. I, true con content curation, has an expert opinion. If you're a journalist and you're not an expert, and some of you might be more into journalism and maybe you're not an expert in anything or maybe your client is really the expert, uh, you're gonna be letting people know what's going on in the industry buzz and you're gonna be taking that a snippet of that content and you're gonna be uh, adding your own, you know, what this means, implications. You're just trying to, content curators are meaning makers. They're not just content swipers. Content swiping is stealing the content directly, where content curation is helping the world interpret the meaning of an event, say, in an industry or in, a, in the news or in the rest. So that's really what we do. And painkiller uh, content curation is really about using our painkiller software in order to look at ideas that you might want to borrow in the industry. For example, if there's a lot of people asking about WordPress uh, plugins and around the topic of SEO, you might uh, start watching all of the questions and interesting topics that happen around SEO for WordPress. And if somebody... So are we, sorry, Russ, just to slay up there, but so are we going to show the guys uh, processes on how to do that, how to quickly create this content, or is it a long process? It really depends. There's, It's actually very, very simple. I mean, I'm going to add a couple of new... Uh, tidbits to that that we haven't used before. Content curation has been changing. Probably some of you remember when curationempire.com launched where I had a pretty hefty course. It was one of the more popular courses out there out of the five or 10 courses that were out there. And um, it's changed because the web has changed. Google actually responded to content curation in a, in a myriad of ways. Uh, the bottom line is that you can curate your own content as well. And like, for example, we have dozens of websites. So to answer your question simply, yes, we're gonna be showing you guys how to curate content in a way that's safe and meets our standards for the semantic web integrated, socially activated one web ring perpetual downstream traffic and domain authority stacking system. And you do, <laughs> there are certain things that you need to be aware of that you don't want to do anymore. Like there's quite a few things that have shifted around. For instance, back in the day, content curation, it still mattered, you could quote, you know, you could use quotes in WordPress and, and you're relatively safe from certain kinds of penalties and the rest. That's changed a little bit. The bottom line is, is that you need to put more of your own opinion into your content than you curate. And you wanna make your articles a little bit longer. And so, yes, we're gonna be getting into some new standards. I'm gonna add some additional content this time around to the 
uh, traffic course, the traffic in this this particular course, uh, and I'm adjusting yeah. for I'm adjusting for those changes because there have been a couple of things that have changed. Yeah, and so yes, I'll be showing That's you. That's good to know that. Uh, yeah, I'll be showing you some plugins that I use, uh, and not recommending that you use them. Just opening my kimono a little bit and showing you a few things that I use. Yeah, and I'm going to be also talking a lot about what not to do. But the repur the repurposing of content and other people's content is a significant part of what I call SEO casting. And as long as you keep, uh, this is something that I've had to learn to do. As long as you stay aware of SEO standards. Uh, I'm constantly checking in with Jimmy and Kelly, Jimmy Kelly, Sue Bell, and Matt DeCruz on this because my forte is not on the technical standards of SEO. I actually have to go and talk to the rest of my team because that, that's how much is going on right now. And just make sure that the standards are integrated. So when we're curating content, you will be showing you how to create a nice balance of treating your curation as a quote. And uh, then, of course, adding your own content. And we're also going to be showing you with Jimmy and I on week either two or three, I can't remember, <laughs> I think it's two. On week two, we're actually going to be nice. showing you step by step. There where, you go, Russ. Let me look at it. More a... Yeah, that's a talk. Uh, I, I actually recommend that all of you take some time and either fast forward. I don't even recommend that you fast forward it. Jimmy and I show you uh, our first, our first uh, video on this was pretty good. It was a little rough. It's going to be a little bit stronger. I'm going to show you how to use Scoop It, my favorite all-time backlinking thing. You won't hear me talk about Scoop It very much on, for example, our joint. Some of you know that we have channel partner webinars like Director's Cut and these things. I don't, we don't even really get into that. The power of Scoop It is so profound that this is the only course that I know that we actually unleash the power of Gilliam's platform, who's a friend yeah. and a friend and somebody who shows me a lot about content curation. So the answer to your question is that we are going to show you. Yes, we are going to show everybody. That was step-by-step -step parameter. There's been a slight shift since last time, but it's mostly the same. I'm going to show you the easy method, the intermediate, me the easy method for lazy people, which is the one that I prefer because um, I'm lazy. And I'm going to also show you the uh, advanced method when I'm really pissed off about a keyword not ranking, and I just and I'm lazy at the same time, and I want to make sure that I I get it happening. Jimmy and I walk you through that process. Now that takes a little extra work, and there's a bonus module in here that we don't have in any other course, you guys. And that course is we actually show you the breakdown. Now, I don't do this very often because it's so freaking tedious. But we show you how to break down a, an image and actually rank for the file of an image. It's one of Jimmy's better kept secrets. <laughs> so you could use that in conjunction of content curation if you wanted to. All right, so it's all in there. And Tony Young is saying that she wants to know how to do content curation. Yeah, and Tony, you can actually, you don't have to wait for next week. You can actually go in there and watch the last webinar dig that right we had. In. Yeah, dig right in. There you go, Matt. Yeah. What's really great about this, guys, is um, do you know why I love doing the coaching courses and, and working all these on all these webinars is because I get a year from my team what's actually happening now every yeah. week as we go through different parts of the stages. And th this is always awesome. I, I love it so much. So the next thing we're going to cover, Russ, is a headline optimization. And yes. under that section there, sorry, under that, we're basically going to talk about painkiller, drawing the click. Russ is going to share concepts that you've spoken about already, tests to improve headlines. He's going to show how we can actually uh, test our headlines. Then we're going to be dealing with writer's block. Nobody likes empty screens. Okay. Then we're going to go through the link building. We're going to do domain authority stacking, through RSS one feed, traffic sources and sales. Okay. Under this piece here. Tracking our traffic sources using UTM codes. We're going to show you how to do that. We're going to look at Google and PVX. So we've covered this over here. I just want to get through the slideshow so we can open up the line a bit. And then um, understanding the penetration you're getting from your social media platforms. This is quite important. This is when we're broadcasting. What's the responses real-world people are actually giving us as we start communicating and, and pushing our content across the web? Okay, um, and then we're going to cover outsourcing at the end of the course. So you can see over the next seven weeks, guys, we've got a lot of stuff going on. And if possible, feel free to start digging in now to see what I said before so that as we go through this iteration, the next one, you can ask us more, ask us better questions. Not that any question is wrong, it's just you've got the foresight, and then when we're on the call live, we can actually start coming up with some better questions. Now, there is um, such a thing as a wrong question, just so you guys know. <laughs> okay. 
I was just going to verify that uh, is the internet a bad question. <laughs> <laughs> An example of a wrong question would be, uh, what time is lunch or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot going on, guys. Um, one thing I'd like to ask you guys now is when we open up these lines to, to have a chat with you is um, there's only a few of you on the call here today, Russ. So I'd like to maybe hear who can actually speak, who's got a headset. I'd like to just uh, ask a question and hear your, your, your response of what you'd like to achieve for your actual website. Uh, if you want to, you can give us a quick two-minute intro into what, you, what your site's about. Any takers? Doesn't look like it. Thank you. Good night. Oh, they shot. <laughs> really shot today. <laughs> okay, so I'm looking. I've got some. Uh, I've got some interesting things here. Bill is saying he'll have his headset next week. Okay, it looks like most people are in kickoff mode, Matt. So we don't have to spend a lot of time today. And also, they know they can start digging into certain things. One of the things you can do is, if you have time this week. Be sure to watch week two, more bang for your buck, your content buck. There's a video there. Matt, just go over to that area. Let's talk to them. Yes. Bill is asking. Um, Bill is asking. Exactly, Russ, can I just show the guys what's asked you? Sorry? Um, guys, for, for one feed, we've got the one feed information on week one. Uh, just before we move on to week two, I just want to finish off this week one here quick, Russ. Um, Here's one feed. We've got the basic and advanced setup and the dash course one feed webinar. Have a look at these this week and then jump into the painkiller content reference in the members area for the template. Just so you can get, get some ideas of where you're going. Okay. And, and then week two, when we get into week two, this is where we really start looking at how we're going to sell online. And um, I'm just opening this up for Russia. Guys, can you give me a one if you can see my screen or if I should make the fonts bigger? Um, Bill's asking, do we discuss SE? Is that social explosion? Are you referring to Bill? Yeah, social explosion. Yes, yes we cover social explosion in this. Yeah, you plug it, you, you buy it, you install it, and you turn it on. Next topic. Do you want specifics on that, Bill? Are you Give me an idea of what, what it is that you want to... Social explosion is shamefully simple in terms of what it actually does but if there's specifics of how it works and that you're that you don't you know that you want to get into just let me know and well it really isn't a target for this course oh yeah sure and uh, also bill i'm going to drop you a link right now that you can go and watch my seven video series it's called why social explosion question mark would that be helpful to you if i added that i will also actually put it in this course as well okay let me give that to you as a uh, Homework assignment? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I've got some uh, interesting information, some analytics I've been tracking on social explosion, so I can actually show you Great. the impact it has uh, on your actual website. We've had uh, a virgin website with no backlinks, anything at all. That is um, a V Kraken site where we've been tracking social explosion. I can show you that from the time we turn it on, what it's actually done. It's been quite interesting. Excellent. Yeah. That we should make a white paper out of that, Matt. Okay, I'll do that then. I'll That's create really, one of really those. Good. And in the meantime, I'll give everybody in the group here some things too. And I'll actually expand on it quite a bit than just what's in the file. Okay, um, you, Rasta, there you and go. And what I what I hear what I hear the question behind the question, which you guys should all be really really familiar with since you, most of you have gone through Tech Foundation 1 and the pain behind the question. What I hear Bill Cox talking about here, the, his question behind the question is really about power versus trust. That's what I really hear him saying. And yes, we will absolutely get into that. It's an appropriate time to get into that in next week's talk, more bang for your content bug. Because in order to understand why content curation works from an SEO level, it's a super useful thing to understand trust and trust flow. And um, so I'll be sure to provide you a lot of material in, as we make the enhancements 
Bill, on on this this particular thing. And content curation, definitely. I mean, when you really look at the content curation stuff that we're going to get into next week, it really is a form of domain authority stacking. You know, I use iframes, and content curation is more of a frame-based version of that. And it's not necessarily as fancy schmancy as the rest of, Dim, of Jimmy's uh, domain authority stacking methods. It's kind of a, there's one version that's a lazy man's version of doing it, and then there's another version that we get into in the video that you guys will find in the members area that's an advanced way of doing it for when you're really pissed off about a keyword and you just want to completely annihilate everybody. <laughs> so all of that is contained in there. I mean, sometimes I do get pissed off about a keyword and then I just crush it. But it takes a lot of time and it's boring and I don't prefer to do that. But sometimes you have to. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> so <laughs> Welton's like, oh, I like, Welton, I thought you were all spiritual and stuff. Welton's like, oh, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm just I'm messing with you, man. I'm just he well and like not always. Well, and have you moved over to the dark side? Are you doing dark chi now? Dark tai chi? I'm just kidding with you, man. I'm messing with you. Okay, so um let me just I lost that uh that link here. But I'm gonna give that to you. Does anybody want me to drop that link uh on YRSS? It has proven to be helpful. It's not advanced, it's not super advanced, but uh, Bill, could you do me a favor and uh, you let me know if it was helpful for you, uh, Bill, because if on the whole social explosion, power and trust thing, because if it's not, um, <laughs> Michael Clay is saying uh, rude things to me here. All right, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys that. If you guys would let me know what's strong and weak about that, I'm bringing more and more of the, the social explosion and the domain authority stuff because Jimmy and Sue and Matt are all really, really good at talking about this. It's not my forte and strength, but I did do a I did do a four dummies video series on power versus trust. And uh, if that was helpful, then we can leverage off of that and some other things. Okay. Michael Clay is saying that he has a red double lightsaber for certification for Jimmy. So do I need one for Russell as well? I got to tell you, you know, I'm not like the rest of the team um, where I would probably take off my own head if I had a double-sided light lightsaber. I just, more and more, the older I get, I just like to focus on one thing that does seven things. And if I have to focus on too many things, Mike, then I'll probably take off my own arm. I don't think I could ever handle one of those evil lightsabers. I would just kill myself. <laughs> okay, Bill, I've got I've gone ahead and given you that um, that link, and I've gone ahead and sent it out to everybody else. All right, since nobody wants to talk to us, we're gonna hang up. Doesn't seem like you guys really want to go over <laughs> anything else. Any questions? Any comments? Any? Mike Clay wants to talk. Mike, I don't know if I want Not you to talk. I don't, I, I don't know if I. I don't know if I want you. To... <laughs> All right, I'm gonna. Mike, you are now live. Do you have any twisted balloon comments to make? <laughs> okay, I'm not hearing you, buddy. So. <laughs> what? It, 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 say it doesn't have a microphone. <laughs> okay, there you're there. <laughs> what any two, tools? Two, two, Bill, one, two, three. Bill is asking what... Network Empire tools okay. will be available. It says I have a microphone now. Can you hear us? I can't hear you, Mike. Yeah, I know. I can hear him, but I don't think he can hear us. Can you hear them? Nope. Everything just yeah. went totally out. I'm well, trying to get speakers. Up. Well, that's not very fun. Ah. Uh. Okay. <laughs> Mark is our technicians. We can hear you, you, Mark. We're turning you off. Okay. We could hear him, but he can't hear us, so I'm turning him off for a second. Um, we're uh, Somebody's asking me what Network Empire tools will be available. I don't believe that there are any Network Empire tools included in this course. I could be yeah, wrong. Yeah, we're not... Uh... We're not, we're not actually using tools, guys, in this one. This is yeah. a content and creating traffic that we're doing here. And then probably the only tool we would use would be a social explosion if you have one of the subscriptions. But we can show you how that works. But at this stage, we're not really doing any keyword work. Yeah, this is 100% training with no software included in this particular course. Uh, that being said, do make sure that 
you know what you have available to you in the members area. And uh, if you're having any issues or questions about what you're entitled to, I know that some of you have multiple uh, subscriptions. And I also know that sometimes that can get a little bit confusing. Don't hesitate to check in with one of us on Skype so that we can confirm what you do or don't have and also what you're entitled to. Check in with us on that, okay? Because I want to make sure that you have everything that you need. Um, tech, yeah, and week two, yeah. don't really, it's not really a keyword research kind of week. We're, we're presuming that you have uh, all of these types of things already in hand. Now, for people who come in for the first time and this is the course that they've taken, it's likely that you're going to need some kind of keyword research tool, preferably ours. But you'll be able to implement most of this information that we're talking about uh, using the tools of your choice. Um, do you have a question, Marvin? Do you have a headset or do you just want to type in your question? Last week you had a, a headset. Hi, Marvin. Can you hear us? Yeah. Uh, this is kind of between, I guess, level one and level two, but it has to do with uh, this question. When you're looking for the uh, product name in the, in the domain, and you can't get that domain with a, uh, a word like for or as. Mm -hmm. Is it okay if you just put the two, uh, the two without that in the domain? Will that hurt you or not be as effective? Can you repeat it? Can you give me an example of what it is you're trying to accomplish and then repeat that question again? You're breaking up a little bit. Okay, the domain that I have is called um, Zeal Health Life. And the product is called Zeal for Life. It, it's, uh, but I couldn't get Zeal for Life, so I just went with Zeal Life together. Is that, is that, I know that's not an exact phrase match, but is it but close enough? That's a network marketing term, right? Uh, what's that? I can't really hear you. I, I think you're in the Philippines and we're having some lion problems, but. I believe that Zeal for Life is Revita, right? It's a network marketing company? Correct. Okay. We're, yeah. we're going to bring it to the Philippines. Okay, gotcha. Um, cool. Yeah, you've got, you've got other fish, too, that you're frying <laughs> with that one. Um, one thing I would say is that are you trying to tar – are you wanting to own Zervita? No, Zeal for Life. But I oh. don't have the ability to get uh, Zeal for Life, so I, what I did was I got Zeal Life wellness.com and so you're but you're my point is that you are trying to rank uh, on zeal for life as the term you want to own the phrase yes okay um, I really don't think that's gonna be very difficult I'm looking at the term now I mean I realize you got in MLM you do have this kind of unexpected competitiveness that comes up you know one of the things since I worked so long with network marketing companies in the past Manatech being the big one as a presidential or not a presidential uh, executive. So I, you know, in my past, I've played around in network marketing before I stopped doing that. One of the things you find is that a lot of the competition depends upon if how their affiliate program works. <laughs> um, if you, if they have a crappy affiliate system and it's over optimized and they're handing out thousands of you know when you sign up you get a free web page that kind of thing mm -hmm. if the seo is poor on that <clears throat> then you can just own everything because then you're not competing against that they're just they have a lot of redundant content you, you'll find that a lot of the sub pages now if they have it all tied to one page and everybody's got a subdomain then you're going to be True. like if it's, if it's zeal for life dot user four three two dot then you're going to be competing with a thousand affiliates who've all got their page signed up. So one thing you might want to check out the top levels is to make sure what is the technology that Zavita is going to be giving uh, each of their users. And now that's also useful for you to know when you bring it to the Philippines because that's huge. Uh, one of the big selling points that closes people in my years of network marketing in my early years was whether or not you have a, they have a done for you page or a, a website set up for them. And it's it's actually up to you and, and part of your responsibility to really look and see like what is the SEO technology. In fact, I consulted for Manatex SEO, which was a nightmare, by the way. Uh, <laughs> um, but but it is important because I mean, think about that. If you got an influx of fifty thousand users, 
coming in. And each one of them has a zeal for life dot user 14 dot com, right? The, yeah, it's the other way around, though. It's their name dot zeal for life and dot, and, a, and they also have a, another site that they give each user that has a okay. domain dot. Okay. Well, that's actually going to build the build authority for Zeal to Life as well because they're building. That's even better for the the hard domain. So your competitor for the term, rather. I know it's you know Zeal for Life is not necessarily your your business competitor, although it might be. Network marketing is a little weird that way, but that those pages are actually going to be building the authority probably for Zeal for Life, which means it's going to be quite competitive to get number one. But if you're going for like number two or three, then you know you shouldn't have that difficult of a time. <laughs> Because most most of those guys coming in are not going to know, you know, how to rank very well for Zeal for Life, and like you, does that make sense? In other words, what you just described is them essentially siloing, <laughs> subdomain siloing via users. It's really odd because the site that is number one is uh, totally. Um, <laughs> I could it, I, before next week or something, I'll send it to you. But it's totally uh, uh, trickery. There's no. Uh, uh, as even as an example, the privacy policy, it shows it, but it just hashes to the top of the page. There's no privacy policy. There are links where they say they're going to a deeper page or learn more. It just takes you to the back, to the site. It just repeats the page, just refreshes the page. But yet they are hitting 34,000 hits uh, a month on the term zeal for, on the term zeal. Which has 34 million in competition, and I just can't understand how they can do it. That's uh, probably fake traffic, <laughs> fake engine traffic. I don't know. Uh, well, yeah, there's some weird stuff on the page. Well, anyway, we're kind of getting into your specific case, but I just thought yeah. I'd toss, I thought I'd toss that out there because these are things that you want to look at, and I, I've seen all kinds of funny business and. Uh, you know, but still, you can still get on the front page for Zeal for Life, and then you can deal with all the weirdness of MLM that comes a little bit later. And we'll try to, you know, we'll try to pitch in a little bit on your specific case. And um, but you get the general idea, right? I don't. I mean, if you're trying to rank for Zeal for Life, I mean, for me, I would rather have it in the domain. But what is the domain? Zeal Life. Zeal Life Wellness. The product is called Zeal Wellness, and. Um, and also, it's called Zeal for Life. Okay. But I'm, probably, I'm probably not the best person to ask on that topic. I can I can try to ask Jimmy or Matt. Or Matt's right here. The, um, isn't yeah. Um, of, of is a stop word, but if you're trying to own the phrase, you can just create a category for the phrase and probably work with it out there. It's probably what I do. But that's just I'm not the expert you, on that topic. You could even rank a subdomain with that phrase in it and use something uh, related as the primary if you yeah. can't get the exact match. That'd be a good question for Sue too. I, I'm not sure if she's still here, but yeah. Yes, Matt, let me just ask you. I can do this. I can get the term Zervita Life. So what about Zeal dot, or I mean, what about Zer, Zeal for Life dot Zervita Life dot com? Using the word life twice is that bad? Yeah, because you don't you don't you don't um, use in the URL. You don't have the same term repeated more than two okay. times. So on your primary, you could get like a related phrase or whatever using TLKT. Uh, Jimmy's domain name finder filters is quite nice. Um, and then you can use Zeal for Life as a subdomain because that carries power if I, you uh, think about it. Yeah, I mean, you could. But again, you know, that's not, a, that's not bad advice at all. I got to tell you honestly, what I would do is I would just get Zeal for Life something. If, like if I if I don't want to mess around and I want to rank for Zeal for Life, you can see somebody bought Zeal for Life products. You know, I remember in the, back in the day I used to go Zeal for Life LLC or Zeal for Life Inc. is another thing that I've done, which actually used to get higher yeah. rankings when you had an Inc. in there <laughs> by default. There's also a whole bunch of new TLDs that are available, like Dot Solutions. Yeah, exactly. Hi Sue, I wasn't sure if you were still here. Uh, I got to tell you, I really wouldn't. Here's the thing. It's like you're going to have enough on. I, I've been I've been where you're at in this, Marvin, and I I wouldn't spend a lot of time messing around with trying to overthink the the over optimization thing, especially since what you want is pretty simple. I would really just get you know zeal for life dot something. You know Sue's idea of an extension is really useful as well. That way you can just focus on what you're trying to do. Now if you got a whole bunch uh, of if you've got a whole bunch of other keyword lists, 
you know, of things that you want. I would still go for a .com, but you know, I just I would just focus on having the domain because I'm looking at this page and people who've got it on the domain. It's just going to be easier on your branding. You understand what I'm saying with that? Mm. It's just going to be easier. I'm looking at some of the domain authority of the people on that page, and it's pretty straightforward. I mean, you're not looking at, honestly, any competition. <laughs> it's just not. What's the domain authority of the number one site? What's that? What's the domain authority of the number one site? Uh, one. No. <laughs> yeah, OK. Let me just double check it. I might be uh, either that or the. I think that might be cloaking. Oh, it's 45. Yeah, that sounds more like it. So that's pretty stiff, actually. Yeah, 45 and then 49 with. Um, with products? Yeah, and it's really just this big flash thing. Let me just look at some, some of the less. Let me look at the top. It's above Amazon, actually. Amazon people are selling this product as well. And then it drops immediately into the into the tens. Like zealforlife.com is the big one, Sue, and then it drops into ten and fifteen domain authority and smaller. So the interesting thing is my number one competitor. And that site is a one page piece of phony the phony site. I mean but they're getting like I said, thirty about thirty four thousand hits a month on the on the, their keyword list, fifty one keywords total. Which I just can't believe. Well, how do you? Where are you getting that information? SEM Rush. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, that's where I'm getting most of it. But okay. I got some of it also from the, the cracking and the last keyword to it. It for shows the, the same thing. For the word zeal for life, the phrase. Uh, well, yeah, it it shows what the traffic is, and mm -hmm. it's uh, they're getting sixty percent of the traffic available. Okay. Understand. Zeal for life is the one that site that. I just put up there. For you okay. Say. Well, I, I actually am going to stand up because I know net, because I know network marketing and MLM from my past. Because I've been where you're at, I would actually agree. Matt's advice is good. I'm going to actually go with Sue's on this because it's a branding issue, and you're going to you're going to have a lot on your plate just dealing with that. And you're if you're going to rank for Zeal for Life, just buy the buy a Zeal for Life with something an extension or Zeal for Life advice or you know i like what i like to do is go zeal zeal for life facts has have always i'll give you a little bit of a tip here it's a little bit too long but my fact or fiction model people think that i'm crazy for using facts or myths or whatever behind something but what happens with that is they end up getting either in google instant or whatever because facts just seem to be this thing that people actually want they're actually looking at you were going to use scams we talked about last week i remember that um, but you don't want that to be your branded domain. You know, you don't want to have scam in your in your branded domain. You can have sub articles with that. So you know, these are just ideas I'm throwing out there for you. But you know, I would focus. I would just focus on keeping on your domain. You know, don't overthink it and try to like. I'm a big branding person, so I'm biased. I don't like people aren't going to translate in their brain zeal dash life dash. You know, they're not going to be <laughs> when you're trying to talk to the robots. You know, and compromising branding, I would definitely not do that for MLM. Like your your robot talking will be fine. You'll be able to figure on, you'll be able to figure that out on page. You'll be able to figure that out on sidebar. You'll be able to figure out that out with siloing and with your videos and with your backlinking. So don't compromise the what you're trying to sell at all in MLM because people just won't be able to figure it out. Does that make sense? Yes. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. All right. Good. So uh, thanks, Sue. I'm I'm glad that you were here for that. Um, I think we'll go ahead and wrap it up unless anybody else has any. Oh, Mike Clay, you wanted to say something. You had some questions as well. Uh, let me go ahead and put you up there if you're still there. What, uh, my big question is, why is Mike Clay logged in twice? Can you hear me, Mike? Can you hear me now? Michael Clay, Mr. Mike. Yeah, yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. We have you. So what's going on? You have questions, comments? Do you want to dance the caramba? What's going on? So I was thinking, you know, the, the keyword I'm thinking about is, oh, I'm hearing myself echo. I can't hear you. Can you repeat that? OK. 
Okay, we've lost you again. Uh, he's gone. Thank you. Good night. All right. So we've lost you. <laughs> okay, that's all right. We'll go ahead and <laughs> sorry, Mike. We lost you. Okay, we'll go ahead and wrap this wrap this up for tonight this afternoon. And I hope you guys are excited. We have lots of preparation for a couple of more webinars coming up this week. Tomorrow is certification level training one week. Matt, what week are we on? My goodness. That's on week five. Um, this is where I'm going to jump into DWS, show the guys how to use the tool, uh, the reports, all that kind of stuff. We're going to dig right into all the sites with the data sets. And um, the guys who gave them the keywords will probably be getting their keywords coming through to them as well. Okay. So they can start playing along and uh, mm -hmm. practice building a site. Excellent. Those of you who have not taken technical foundation level one, it's not required to take this course. And it's certainly not required to take our automatic video traffic course, uh, which is level three. Uh, people are, there's a lot, really a lot of people inside that course right now in level three, the automatic video traffic course, uh, watching the videos and pinging us as the Skype group is somewhat active. Uh, usually it's more active during the actual boot camps, but there. So if you are interested uh, in taking level one, it's not a problem to take this training and go back to it. Just check out all of our courses and training at swallowyourmarkethole.com if you guys need any help and know where, knowing your place. We are here to help you. It's a very personal. We've uh, known some of you for many, many years and seen all kinds of successes happening. And, you know, of course, it's not always been roses and peaches. There's always, you know, I've known, an, I've known some of you uh, for close to a decade now, and I've watched you guys go through yeah. different. Yeah, some of you have gone through difficult times. It's not just been perfect, but then I always see you guys rise to meet the occasion, to the occasion and meet the new standards happening. And I've seen massive success. I've seen a lot of, I've seen people in our community rise from the ashes and make millions as well. So it's really interesting when you're in business for 10 years with so with, you know, hundreds of students, you get to see all kinds of really, really cool things happening. And I watched a lot of you evolve and my hope, and I know Matt's, Matt and I are dedicated and the rest of the team, Sue, Jimmy, we're dedicated to your success and making sure that your specific and unique case is applied to the vast amount of knowledge, insights, technology tools that we have for you guys. So I look forward to seeing you next week. It's going to be Wednesday at the same time. And this is going to be a real doozy. So rest up, <laughs> read up and rest up. Uh, the curation training is a monster. It's a beast. And it's going to be more so this upcoming week. So I look forward to seeing each and every one of you there. Matt, do you have anything, any closing words? Yeah, guys, um, do yourself a favor and look at the previous webinars. Just run through them for the week ahead. Um, it will answer a lot of your questions up front. Let that information filter through your brain. And then when we jump on the call, um, hear what Russ has got to say, especially when it comes to the content, the marketing, the funnels. Because remember, what we do now is we're creating a big sales funnel. Our marketing is to drive traffic. We've got to push it into the funnel. We have to convert it. We have to track it. And we have to create transactions. So this is what we, this course is all about. Absolutely. And now, that's, here's, that's about it for us. Um, good. Here's a little parting question for you guys that I want you to be thinking about because it's going to matter. And I know that some of you have your own businesses. I know that some of you have uh, your own products. I know that some of you have, and this actually is not that far away from some stuff that we're just going over with Marvin. This is something that's the theme of my year, uh, walking away as I've looked at literally thousands of products and offers from students. And that is going through Tech Foundation 1, you should already know this, but it's not something that we focus on there. What are you offering? We talk about it and what the heck are you selling? Okay. And I've had the great pleasure of working with some of the most dangerous marketers on the planet for sure, to the point where, you know, the level of skill that they have and they've passed on to me and taught me is actually dangerous because you could actually sell crap and still be very successful. <laughs> if you know these neuromarketing tricks that I'm going to be showing you throughout this training. The one important thing for you to really think about is what is your product that you're selling and not just your product, but what is your offer? What are you offering? Okay. An offer is different from a product and an invention that we covered in tech foundation one. An offer is different than the invention or the ISGNA and the keyword clusters that you provided. An offer could be different. You could have 27 people selling the exact same product. For example, Zervita, it doesn't matter if it's network marketing, 
It doesn't matter if it's selling purple widgets and keychains on Amazon Prime. It doesn't matter if it's an information product on how to double your dating with Eben Pagan. It doesn't matter. You know, I've studied with all of the, many of the greats and, and you know, studied a lot of their material. We're going to be getting into some of these things. But what is your offer? What are you offering? Okay. In other words, how are you positioning your offer in the market? So really be thinking about that. Are you offering an improvement? Are you offering an opportunity? Okay, which one is it? Where the position are you coming from? Network marketing is a very interesting thing, Marvin, because when it comes to that front, they both they off they try to offer both. Like there's the opportunity to resell, and then there is the product itself, which is designed to improve the quality of your life. And I'm, I'm, this kind of came up because Marvin, you know, exposed his product and services and it allowed us to help him and, and look at that, which is great because he's got this thing that he's doing with it. Because of my, you know, over a decade in the network marketing industry with including some high level consulting for it brings up the topic that I think is is really important for everybody to look at. Just so you know, some of my mentors in the industry of marketing and conversion and persuasion, and this is not unrelated also to looking at Tawny Young, some of the stuff you're doing. OK, <clears throat> this is coming from somebody who is a mentor of mine who sold over $200 million of products online by tweaking offers only by neural marketing. OK, only by writing. On average, improvement offers perform 60 percent less than opportunity offers. Just want you guys to be. I'm going to repeat that on average, improvement offers convert 60 percent less good less well than opportunity offers. So this is going to be a theme that we're going to be looking at. Now, keep in mind that everything, you still need all of the keyword research. Everything that we've done is set up for you to just have this eureka moment. When you understand what I'm going to be conveying through the process of this course, you're going to be able to twist this around to have an unfair competitive advantage in your marketplace. This is why we do this only in certification. This is why. Because we have to deal with your unique case, with your unique case, because you can curate all you want. You can create all the content you want, but if your offer sucks, nobody's going to buy from you. My job is to make sure that everybody buys from you and that you position your product and service. An example, and again, this is stuff that I learned through my mentors over the years, and, and there's different cases for, for everything. An improvement offer, Bill Cox is asking me, like, what's the, you know, give an example of an improvement offer. This is an opportunity offer. Well, let me, is it okay, Marvin, if I use your um, products for, as an example? I can use anything you want. An improvement offer, let me give you an example. An improvement offer would be, um, if, I go for, if I go to Zeal for Life or if I go to one of Marvin's websites and I say, okay, I want to buy this product. It's an amazing product. And he gives me the unique mechanism that makes up the every company, every MLM, every MLM company, every product out there, they have a unique mechanism that they use. For example, Manatech. I was a president, uh, a uh, executive director in Manatech, you know, well over a decade ago. What is Manatech's unique mechanism? It's the seven polysaccharide unique mannitose sugar combinations that talk to your cells in very, very special ways that nothing else talks to. Okay. That's the unique mechanism. We call that the UM, okay? Or that's the, it's not, a unique mechanism is not a unique selling position, okay? But Manatech's selling position was um, targeting sugars. One person, for example, who was an executive director in Manatech decided to create a unique selling position for his MLM product. And he went out and wrote a book called uh, Sugars That Heal. Some of you might already know that. Sugars That Heal, his name was, I knew this guy, and the, the book became a best-selling author book on Amazon. This is before Kindle was even around. And by virtue of the fact that he'd written a book, how many people would be more inclined to buy Manatech from him and or join his downline for the opportunity? So the improvement might be eat better sugars and, ha and feel better. That's an improvement offer. Buy Ambrotose and Manatech because you're going to feel better. That's an improvement offer. But have you guys ever heard of people having a difficult time making money in network marketing? Not that they don't, not that you can't, 
But part of it is because of the way that they position their offers, they don't really understand that the difference. So that's an oper- that's a uh, improvement offer, improve your quality of life, feel better. Now, don't get me wrong, health and wellness is an amazing industry, but you could have five or six different people selling Manatec and Embertos, and only one of them would sell it really, really well. Of course, and then you sell improvement to your friends and family, and they're the first to buy. And then, of course, you move on to the, when you start to get into real marketing, the problem is that most people are selling improvements, and there's a thousand different products out there that are claiming to improve your life. An opportunity offer would be you can improve your life and make money. That's what, by the way, has made Network Empire, so, I'm sorry, uh, MLM, Network Empire, God, MLM so successful is they are combining the opportunity with the improvement. Now, there are a few people that just go only with the improvement and they're really, really into health and they're usually health and wellness coaches and they're these types of things, <clears throat> but the improve and they're selling the improvement, but they've got the personal branding to back up that self-improvement. You see what I'm saying? So health and wellness coaches do really well with improvement offers <laughs> because they're already representing improvement as an opportunity. Okay. But the opportunity, for example, Bill would be, you know, uh, you can make, if, you know, $5,000 a month and we will give you the templates and the plug and play and the SEO and the website comes with it, right? That's an opportunity offer, which performs much better and on average. Now, now we're speaking very specifically to MLM. This does not matter. MLM is not unique in this way. Let me give you another example that one of my mentors gave me, which you guys might find kind of humorous. And since one of my mentors has made over $200 million in sales, I found this very interesting and you guys probably won just just by this thing that I've told you today, the improvement versus the opportunity. An example would be one of his coaching students came to him and said essentially that, you know, she helps, her job is to you know, help men win back their wives who started to not like them anymore. And of course, he was a little bit more crude about how he described this. But anyway, they're not sleeping together anymore. <laughs> okay. So the offer was essentially, you know, win back your lo- improve your sex life, you know, get your wife to stop hating you. <laughs> right. And, you know, that is the ultimate improvement offer. And essentially, when one of my mentors looked at this and said, like, that is the worst offer ever. Like it will not convert. Like I cannot use my golden touch and even fix this unless you do exactly what I say. He said, I can improve it, but that is actually an improvement offer. Okay. An improvement offer in a relationship, a contrast to an improvement offer in a relationship would be a man going out and having an affair, right? Because his marriage for him, his marriage, he's not getting the sex he wants in his marriage. There's not these types, you know, it's not going on. So for him, an opportunity offer would be double your dating by even Pagan. So if you've got a guy who's unhappy with his marriage, he's got two offers in front of him. One is double your dating with even Pagan or how to get a chick to sleep with you on the first date. That's the first offer. And the second offer is how to get your wife to like you again. Which offer do you think is going to hide the highest conversion? Everybody go ahead and type that in. <laughs> Bill is saying, wow, that, that's pretty clear. <laughs> Welton says DVD. I was waiting for the responses. <laughs> you, you guys, I want you to listen to me and listen to me really good. This is not shit that I'm making up. This is the core of how the guys that taught me, people like Eben Pagan, who I studied with, There's a lot of guys that I use. In fact, we have a a chart that we go over called the Persuasion Mastery Chart, which I spend some time on every week. I study with the greats. I look and I codify what it is that they're doing. That stuff that I just described there is true in almost every industry. Now, what's weird about that, when I talk to most of you about repositioning your pain, your painkiller, or positioning, a remember I talked about a vitamin or a a painkiller? When I talk about repositioning a vitamin into a painkiller, what I'm really talking about is repositioning the offer as an opportunity rather than an improvement, okay? And so the problem with that type of thing is is that you're up against really intense behaviors. And this is the one thing that I want to make sure that you guys know that you're up against. It's a neural mechanism that I only give away to certified advisors. Tony, I actually talked a little bit about it live. Um, but here, 
the one thing I want you to cling to, the one neuromarketing tip that I want you guys to remember is that when you're providing people an improvement offer of any kind, or even you're sitting there with an improvement idea in your mind, what you're doing most of the time, what you're up against is a force that's greater than any technology, <laughs> any magical golden touch. There's no, the force is so huge and that's the force of failure. Because this is why the diet, the dieting market industry, some of the greatest copywriters of all time, when they enter into that, they crush it because they know what I'm about to tell you. Is that when you're offering an improvement offer, when you're speaking to that man who has <laughs> been told that, been given an offer about how to make his wife sleep with him again, what you're doing is you're triggering his, his memory of failure. You don't want to touch that stuff, guys. You want to provide new opportunities. <laughs> you want to avoid, at least in the initial offer, it doesn't mean that ultimately you can't upsell and side sell into improvement. It's just that you don't want to trigger the memory. For example, when you're selling a weight loss product, this might be true for you too, to Bill, on the security thing. These are things that we want to talk about. Make sure that you really got that nailed. Is when a new diet comes along, most of the time, and it's an improvement positioning, meaning, you know, improve your life. And all you're really talking about is how, you know, to, how you're going to improve it. What you're up against is a lot of the times when people have gone, have done different diets, they've failed. It doesn't work. So you have to find a way to reposition it, not necessarily as an opportunity to resell the product. That's not what I'm talking about, but you have to position it as an opportunity. And the way that is done is in something called the unique mechanism. Okay, the unique mechanism. So for instance, when my mentor actually repositioned that how that product, this is something I've studied of his for a long time. When he repositioned that product as, you know, helping, you know, when how, how, you know, the woman who was actually providing the offer, which is how to get your wife to love you again, or to sleep with you again, or to not hate you anymore. <laughs> what that's triggering in the man is all the times that he's failed when he, when he tried to, he may have already tried to rescue the relationship, or he may have, he may have bought flower, brought flowers to her. You know, she's still, and, and those of you who are men, you know, we've all had arguments with our spouses and this and that, and there's times when it just, you can't do anything right. And that's true on both sides. I'm not just saying it's just only with men and women. You guys probably know what I mean by that. Okay. Yeah. So when somebody comes along and says how to make your, get your wife to love you again, you have to be careful how you write the copy because most of the time you, <laughs> Tim, you're funny. Tim Edwards has made a funny comment. Uh, most of the time, you're just you don't want to trigger the memory of how you failed before. You want to position it as an opportunity. So the unique mechanism in that opportunity would be, for instance, two ninja tricks, right, to get your wife to sleep with you again. Or I think the way he positioned it was two ninja tricks to. Uh, get your wife to miraculously wake you up in the middle of the night for sex or something. It was a headline that converted to 80% and it still converted a really terrible offer, which is a improvement offer just because it used a unique mechanism. So that's the trick I want you guys to be thinking about. I want you to walk away with as you start looking at your products is a unique mechanism. That is the unique technology that you're providing. We call this the ISDNA, the, the unique mechanism with which your product works is very, very important especially if you have an improvement-based product. And the reason I bring this up is because I've had two or three students that have come to me over the last four or five weeks, and I realize that they're not quite getting the fact that it's their unique or proprietary mechanism, proprietary technology that can be, even if it's designed, even if it does improve your life or improve the life of your customers, you still need to position it and tell them about that unique mechanism and how it works. So in Marvin's case, for instance, uh, Zervita, has got to have a unique mechanism. Manatech, for example, the unique mechanism was Ambertose. It was a, a long chain sugar that miraculously affected cellular metabolism. And that the people who sold Manatech that focused on the unique mechanism, especially in my downline, they performed 20 and 30 and 40% better than people who were just selling improvement. Oh, this will make you feel so much better. Does that make sense, you guys? Give me a one if that makes sense. Okay. But it's not an easy jump from understanding because there's a lot of you that understand uh, proprietary talk, right? We've taught you, Matt and I taught you very well in Tech Foundation One, that ISDNA, industry, solution, invention, 
Okay, that that is a unique mechanism if you have one. Okay, we already taught you guys about that, but it's it's been a little bit trickier for most people to make the connection between that and the difference between an improvement offer and an opportunity, because you a unique mechanism think, a, a unique mechanism can is I say an something, opportunity. Russ? Okay, and that's what I want you guys to understand is that a unique mechanism that is your ISDNA actually is an opportunity, and you need to position it as such. Yeah, go ahead, Matt. Um, it's so true what you're saying there because if the people aren't clear on what they're saying, saying it's, it's hard to even decide what type of mechanism you need to use based on that product, if that makes sense. Yeah, and that's why um, Sue wrote a document called What the Heck Are You Selling? That's only the first step. Everything that we've set you up with ends at, and everything lives and dies by your offer at the end. I've seen people that have ranked for thousands of keywords and have invested, you know, they still get, you'll still get conversions. I mean, 10% of your market just stumbles over you, right? But if the offer sucks and is not positioned in a way that your customer actually sees the value of the product as an opportunity, then it fails because I've seen significant amounts of improvement offers fail and network, um, network, oh God, I got to stop that. MLM is network marketing. <laughs> I keep saying network marketing. Now. MLM is an example of a market where thousands of people fail because they're selling improvements when what they should be selling is opportunity. Let me give you an example. One of my friends uh, in Manitech, like myself and my partner, and Sue Bell, I don't think she's here, but she probably remembers this. We brought more $1,000 mem members in to, net to Manitech in a single five-month period than had ever been done in the history of the company. How did we do that? How did we do that? By selling the opportunity, obviously, and a lot of people do that. And they, But it wasn't just that. The mechanism with which we sold the opportunity was unique. It wasn't limited to Manitech's marketing. We created a book, it was called Million Dollar Business Home Opportunity, and the book was entirely about everything that people should not do <laughs> to make money at home, okay? We sold, you know, we had a pretty good outreach of uh, unique, unique mechanisms and we had a pretty decent lead funnel, at least my partner did. And in that, people had purchased the $375 book on home business opportunity and what to do. In fact, we ran an ad. I think the ad cost us $5,000 in the back of a home business magazine, right? And we actually generated what we call level three leads. People came in because they had purchased. Now, here's a weird thing. This is a weird thing. People who purchased a $300 book that we sent to them in the mail were significantly more likely to purchase a $1,000 Manitoc bundle, okay? That's a tripwire. The reason that works is because as soon as somebody has their pocketbook open to a level one, level two, a level three lead, they're more inclined, and there's a lot of arguments in the neurosciences to why this is the case, they're more inclined to spend more money with you but you have to get the purse strings open. So we discovered this. this we discovered this in the 90s. And so we had a 20% conversion of people who we would upsell into a network marketing opportunity, okay? And they had done that because they had first purchased a direct opportunity via an opportunity offer and not through, a, I, I, we just as easily could have sent them an improvement offer. Right, if we were in the health and wellness industry, we would have uh, sent them an improver, improvement offer. But more people came in through the opportunity, I would say about 60% more than came in through the improvement and the health and wellness offer. Now, that does not mean that health and wellness cannot have an opportunity offer tied to it in the form of a unique mechanism. So these are the things that we're going to be talking about when we you know, go through these various aspects of memetic what we call meme jacking on the rest. So I just want to make sure that you guys are really considering your offer. And remember, your offer is not the siloing structure. It's not the ISTNA. It's not the keyword research. It's that final page where you go to where you are selling me something. Okay. Yeah, we are going to just, uh, well, we are going to stuff meme jacking on week two. I mean, sorry, week three. And, three, <laughs> and I'm, add, I'm adding a module through that because I've, I've actually significantly improved people's traffic by helping them create memes. And again, if your offer is not going to convert, then all the traffic from the memes in the world don't matter. 
So one of the things that's significant is to be looking at your sales page. If any of you ever have uh, a sales page question, if you have a video sales letter, if you have anything like that, it's important that you show Matt, myself, what it is that you're doing, because that's where the rubber meets the road. That's where you know, you're gonna make that offer and they're gonna click that buy button and we can drive all the traffic in the world. It's becoming important because we're gonna be showing you how to generate traffic and ranking and we already have been and we're already gonna be giving you that. But we, got, we also gotta make sure that you're actually converting. And so that's why this conversion stuff that Matt's gonna be showing you is so important because if your offer stinks, then you're gonna see really high traffic and then you're gonna see people bouncing off of that page because they're not really going to be understanding what is that you're offering or, or how that is different from anything else. Does that make sense, you guys? Okay, good. So that's my little, that's my end of introduction rant. And if you have any questions, that's good, about, Russ. That's really good. Yeah, if we, if we have any questions, it is probably one of the, you know, I've spent a couple of years trying to get to the heart of, you know, what it is that, what it is that people are missing. Like, I think what happens is, all of it in the ISDNA process, we're really focused on keywords. We're really focused on making sure that the robots go to those high ranked pages that we're creating and that all happens. But when you're speaking to humans, the only thing that they're listening to really <laughs> is, <laughs> is this an opportunity? And if so, why is it more important than everything else that happening in my life? In other words, is there a unique mechanism? Is there an emotional connection to why it's unique? and why I should give it more attention than something else? Or are you offending me by telling me how I should improve and reminding me of how I failed before to improve? If you understand that one thing, you guys are right up there with some of the best marketers in the world. And I think that's probably one of the better kept secrets. Everything else at that point is copywriting. And I know that not all of you want to go to copywriting school, you know, yeah. but if you uh, understand that basic principle. You don't really have to become a, a master copywriter. You just know, oh yeah, that's right. How can I shift this around? All right, you guys, I think that's it for the day. So we will see you at the next uh, yep. same bat cave, same bat time next week. And be thinking about that because I'm going to be talking to you guys about how that works. Yeah, this is where we're putting the plumbing into your sales funnel. And we, this is where persuasion starts becoming real. Yeah, and it's important because as Matt shows you on the as we start getting into the one feed, those the final setups and these types of things, as we get into all these connections and the higher certification level courses, th there has actually been one or two students that have developed these massive empires of networks of sites that you know followed our methods and they're successful, and they're not necessarily their offer doesn't necessarily convert. And by the way, that's a good problem to have. Even if you go through this entire process and you're you're generating thousands of visitors and your pin bid sites are driving you know, if you're going to be able to tell that it's not converting because Matt's going to show you how. And the good news, that's a good problem to have because then you just go in and tweak your offer. But there's no, pro you know, one of yeah. the things is to really be thinking about it now so that as you're moving forward, it's kind of in the back of your mind and your copy and your painkiller articles are all speaking to that. All right, you guys, we'll talk to you next week. We look forward to seeing you on the inside of Tech Foundation 2. Thank you. Thanks a lot, guys. See you next week. Bye-bye, y'all.